Hello Internet, so nice to see you. Today I want to talk with you about one of my favorite devices to make music. And this is going to apply both to writing melodies and writing chord progressions. So double whammy here, okay? I'm talking about suspension. And you have may heard about suspended chords, but suspension is actually, in my opinion, cooler than just suspended chords because it allows you to move the music in a specific way. Anyway, let's see this. First of all, I want to say one thing. It's best to hear it first, and then we go and see exactly what it is. Because, as usually in music theory, if we just talk about it, mm, there's not much there, no? It's when we hear this that makes a difference. So, I wanted to pay attention because suspension has been used in different kinds of music. So I'm going to give you first an example from Baroque music. Then I'm gonna give you an example on a more modern song. Turn around, look at what you see. So what's happening here? What is this suspension we are talking about? Well, here's the idea. Let's say we have a chord progression. I'm gonna start with a super simple chord progression. I'm going to start with C to G. In, I'm going to consider this in C major and thinking this is the first chord or the fifth chord. We're also going to see later 5 to 1. The idea is that I'm going to take this on a super simple chord progression so we can go really in depth. And then once you've seen this, you can do this on any other chord progression. The idea is this, in the C major chord, my notes are C, E, and G. And in my G major chord, my notes are G, B, and D. And I'm, I'm going to play C to G. A suspension will be taking a note of the C major chord and holding it or playing it again when the G major chord comes and then resolving it down by step to a note of the G major chord. Oh my, this sounds like something really complex, but let me show you an example immediately. Super simple. So I'm going to play a C major chord and the notes I'm playing are C, E, G, then I'm gonna play this G major chord with notes G, D, G, B. But rather than going straight, I'm gonna hold the top C note into the G major chord. So I'm not gonna play the B in the G major chord, I'm gonna play the C instead, and then later I'm gonna move this C down to a B. which is, incidentally, exactly what is happening in the never-ending story theme song. It seems like a small thing, but if you take this little thing out, the song suffers for it. And indeed, I'm going to dedicate another video on analyzing this little thing on this song and going more in-depth on that specific song. Is that the only thing we can do going from C to G? No, we can do more, because we can also hold, if you notice, the E note and resolve it later into a D note. So, it's going to sound this way. I'm going to change slightly the voicing of the chord. I'm going to play now C, G, C, E. And I'm going to play for G, I'm going to play G, higher G, B, D. This way I have my suspension on the top voice and it's easier for you to hear. Of course, I don't have to put this on the top voice. I can put it in one of the middle voices. It's just less evident. So, here it is. I'm going to now play my voicing C, E, G, C for C and G, D, G, B, for G. And I'm suspending this E at the tenor voice here into the D later. So... As you see, less evident than before. And also, the E note is not that dissonant over the G chord, so it's less evident. The 6 tend to be the most consonant non-chord note, so it's less evident as a dissonance. But for instance, what if I did something like uh, using a C minor to G, like I'm in a C minor key, and so my notes are now C, E flat, 
G, that E flat is gonna be a bit more dissonant. So here's what I'm gonna play. C, G, C, E flat into G, G, B, D, and suspending the E flat. That's a bit of a stronger sound, don't you think? Now the fun thing is that I can suspend both notes at the same time. I'm gonna do this in two different voicing. The first one with the C suspension on top. And the second one with the E suspension on top. And again, all those sounds are just plain old C to G. I'm just holding a note of the C chord into the G chord and then later moving this note down a step in the scale into a note of the G major chord. Can I do the opposite? Can I play the G chord and suspend one of its notes into the C major chord so I can go from G to C and suspend a note? Of course I can. I cannot do it for the B note the normal way because the B note will have to resolve down a step and down a step it's A and the A note is not in the C chord so that's not a candidate for a normal suspension but we're gonna see something later. But I can do this for the D note because the D note can resolve later down to the C note in the C major chord. So how is it gonna sound? It's gonna sound this way. And this seems to be it but I can cheat, and rather than playing a G major triad, I could play a G7 chord instead, because after all, most of the time I play a 5 to 1, I'm gonna put a 7th in there. So my notes are now not just G, B, D, but G, B, D, F, with F being the 7th. And this F is exactly in the right position to be used for a suspension. Indeed, I can just hold this F into the C major chord and then resolve it down to the E note. At this point, the question is though, why we are resolving all our suspension down? And an academic would simply say, because that's the definition of suspension. So the question is, why is this is the definition of suspension? Why is not something different? Well, and the idea is that when you resolve those notes down, it gives a better feeling of resolution, tension from resolution, because I mean, going down seems to relax better. Psychologically speaking, your ear feel this movement down as a relaxation, like something falling, okay, in a gravitational field or something goes from a place of high energy to a place of low energy, okay? But, of course, we can do whatever we want with music theory, right? So, we can actually suspend a note into the next chord and resolve it up. Now, here's when music theory book starts fighting among each other, because some music theory books say that this is an inverse suspension, some other think it's just a suspension going up, and some other music theory book call this movement a retardation rather than calling it a suspension. I actually don't care about all those names, and I actually don't care even about the debate if it's the same thing or not. To me, it sounds good, and honestly, if you want to classify it just as a suspension that resolves up, I'm perfectly fine with that. Okay? So, where will this happen? Well, a great candidate here is when we go from G to C, we're gonna suspend the B note into the C major chord and then resolve it up into a C note. And this sounds this way. The important point for me is that you can take any chord progression and start doing the exact same thing you were doing now for every pair of chord. Take any simple chord progression, and please stay simple, take two chords, take three chords, don't go with eight chords, okay? Start simple, take every single chord in the progression and think, what notes of this chord can I suspend into the next chord and resolve them stepwise, so just moving them by a single step in the scale? And then you have to find a way to play them on your guitar. And this is much, much, much easier if you really, really know your fretboard and your guitar. Because honestly, if you have to spend, I don't know, five, 10 minutes just to find where you can play a G chord so that you have a D note on top to suspend that note, well, you're doomed, okay? Uh, you need to know your chords on your fretboard and be familiar with them so that you can do your musical experimentations 
without spending hours and hours. Now, if you find yourself uh, spending time searching, like, where, I, where is this chord? What inversion should I find here? And all this kind of thing. I would recommend you guys check out my course, Complete Chord Mastery, where I teach you everything there is to know about chords and harmony on guitar and uh, how, how to play all the inversion, how to play chords in all position and all these. In, at the very beginning of the course, I'm teaching you different systems to see all those chords all over your fretboard and connect them. And this will make your life way, way, way easier. So totally, absolutely recommended. If you like these videos, smash that like button, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments, etc., please leave me a comment below. I love reading your comments and I'm making videos on them. This is Tommaso Zillio of MusicTheoryForGuitar.com. And until next time, enjoy!